Hey guys, Kyle here with Dark Iron Diesel, and today we're gonna put back together uh, the head gasket on this 5.9 that we took apart in the last video. So uh, I put a lot of effort in these videos, so if you could shoot me a like and a subscribe, that would be awesome. And if you got any questions, ask in the comments, or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel and shoot me a message. Thanks guys, let's get at her. Okay, I got my head back from the machine shop. They resurfaced it, they pressure tested it, they checked it for cracks, all that stuff. Uh, they also put in my new Hamilton 103 pound valve springs. Again, you don't have to do that. I'm just upgrading a few parts to get ready for a bigger turbo and injectors down the road. So anyways, what I do when I'm doing this job, first thing, I'm going to put the things on the head that we took off before we sent it away to the machine shop. So I think you got a lifting hook and your alternator bracket on the front. Uh, you got this intake cover and there's another lifting hook. There's a temperature sensor for your coolant. I believe that's it. But a few things, so just kind of get the head ready to put back in the truck the same way that you took it out of the truck. When you're putting this guy in, back in, make sure you use some Teflon tape or thread sealant. Uh, but yeah, obviously this is gonna be dirty. You're gonna have to clean it. You might notice mine's black. Well, the machine shop painted my head black, so I decided I might as well just keep going with it. So I went a little crazy on the paint, painted this black. I got valve cover, I got intake horn, I got a bunch of other shit back there that I also painted black. So we'll see if it pays off. But anyways, this head should be ready to go back on. So now we're gonna go over to the truck and we're gonna prep the block. So just before I clean the deck, I'm just gonna grab an SOS pad or something and I'm just gonna buff these exhaust manifold flanges just a little bit to clean them up because once we get the head in there, we're not gonna be able to get that at them. So, and then the cardboard is here just to prevent debris from falling into the engine. So I'm gonna use this uh, little buffer wheel pad on here. Uh, you don't wanna see sparks. This blue color is, uh, it shouldn't dig that deep, shouldn't get sparks. So sparks are bad because you don't wanna actually take material off. You just wanna try to clean up this kind of crust and crud, stuff like that. So I'm gonna go over the deck now and just very gently kind of go go over, go over it and uh, just try to get her shiny. Okay, so now that we have the head nice and clean, we're gonna make a mess again. We're gonna use a blow gun and you wanna blow out all your uh, head bolt holes. Uh, and I usually wrap a rag around the end of it and yeah, you're just gonna blow it out, clean all the, anything in there, oil, coolant, whatever, just get the holes nice and clean. And then once that's done, we'll clean out the pistons and wipe the whole head down and it should be ready for the head gasket. Okay, mine wasn't actually that bad. It was pretty much just uh, these ones along the driver's side that had oil in them. But yeah, you just wanna blow them all out, get them all nice and clean. Uh, and now I'm just gonna take a rag and I'm gonna first just kinda wipe in here, try to get in the in your pistons and just kind of clean it all out and uh, do that to all of them and then after I usually spray a rag with brake clean and wipe the pistons out one last time and then wipe the head off or sorry and then wipe the deck off and uh, then we're ready so I wiped out my pistons and then I sprayed some brake clean in there wiped them out again sprayed a little brake clean on the deck and I wiped it all off I noticed I missed a couple little spots so I got them with my buffer wheel again wiped it all off, uh, it's all clean, nice, no debris anywhere. Now what you wanna do is take a straight edge, a level, something like that, and you wanna lay it on your head, or sorry, you wanna lay it on your block, your deck here, and you just want to, it's best to get feeler gauges and just feel under there. Make sure your uh, deck isn't warped. Uh, mine just feels good, looks good, but, uh, and typically you should be fine but it's always another good thing to check to make sure it doesn't wobble or anything like that because then doing this head gasket is gonna be useless and you have a much bigger issue on your hand. Make sure your two dowel pins, one's here and one is in between cylinders five and six. Make sure it, they're in and they're bottomed out, maybe tap them with a little rubber mallet or something, make sure they're at the bottom. And now we can put the head gasket on. Okay, the head gasket is on. Typically, any head gasket that I've ever used, if it's got words, like mine does here, words face up, 
don't quote me on that, but that seems to be the pattern. Uh, I always try to flip them on a bunch of different ways to make sure it doesn't fit more than one way, just because I'm paranoid. But yeah, this is the way it goes. You can see all your holes, you know, all this stuff lines up. Just double check that all everything lines up and uh, you should be good. We can put the cylinder head on. Get your chain on your lifting hooks and away we go. And same with when we removed it, it's good to put some screwdrivers in here just so the hook can't jump on the chain. Okay, and just before we put the head on, I'm gonna spray it off with a bit of brake clean and air just to make sure there's nothing on the bottom of the head. Or we're just getting ready to put this head in. Uh, the last thing we wanna do is just make sure everything is out of the way. I just pulled back this wire, uh, double check there's nothing on your head gasket, nothing in your pistons, um, and yeah. So when we put the head in, just like we took it out, we're gonna kinda come here, angle it down, move it forward, and once it's kinda past the firewall here, we'll set it in and set it down. And once you have it down close, um, almost resting on the block, you're just gonna kinda wiggle it back and forth until it drops on uh, your dowels. One dowel here and one dowel back there and you'll kinda feel it go thunk. Okay, straight in. That looks a lot better. A little more. Okay. Okay, come in more now. A little more. Okay, go down more. A little more. Okay, hold on. Okay, go down slowly. I think the front just went on. Hold on. There. Yeah, no, it was on. Cool. Can take this out. All right, the head is on. So go around, just make sure you're not pinching anything. Everything still moves freely, all that stuff. Make sure your holes all line up. And uh, if you're satisfied, we'll start putting the ARP head studs in. Okay, so we got our ARP head studs here. The first thing I like to do is take them all out because there's gonna be six that are longer than the rest. And we wanna separate those ones. So if I hold them like this, these three, and these three. Those are longer ones. So those ones are gonna go along the exhaust manifold side. So it's just good to kind of keep them separated. Okay, so the ARP studs come with their uh, assembly lube. So what you wanna do is you're gonna put a little bit on the threads and I use this kind of little paint or this uh, little brush here. And you just wanna get it in the threads real nice. You're gonna do that on both sides, on all the bolts, and just try to keep these uh, six separated again, just so that we know where they are for when we're assembling. Okay, so once you got all your studs lubricated on both sides of the thread, then I just like to take the nuts, and I kind of put a little dab of this lubricant in there, and kind of get in with the brush a little bit, just kind of get the, the edge nice and lubed up and then same with the washers i like to just get them a little bit lubricated too and i keep them all in here so just go ahead and do the rest of them and then we'll start throwing them in the truck once they're all lubed up we'll start putting them in the engine so uh, the coarse thread goes down you'll see the top has an allen key hole on it so just put all your studs in and keep in mind these these uh, this is one of the longer studs there's six of them the longer studs go along your exhaust manifold side. So the longer studs are gonna go here, 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 there, and back there in that straight line. Okay, all the studs are in. 
Uh, now I'm taking a five millimeter Allen key socket. You could just use an Allen key if that's all you have. And I'm going to tighten all the studs all the way down. And once they bottom out, I'm gonna back them off a quarter turn and do that to all of them. Okay, once you thread in all your bolts, remember you tighten them and then back them off a quarter turn. Then we're gonna put all the washers on. Okay, once you have all the washers on, you can go ahead and uh, thread on all of your nuts. Okay, I got all the nuts threaded down just hand tight. Uh, this is gonna be the torque spec. You should get one of these papers with your head stud kit. But you can see we're gonna start in the middle at one, two, then go over to the right at three, four, and then back over to the other side at five, six. You can kind of just, we're, we're gonna start in the middle and work our way out all the way to the, each side evenly. So that's the pattern. Um, it wants us to do three steps, 40 foot pounds, 80 foot pounds, and then 125 foot pounds. I, t I usually go to 130 or 135 on the last torque. That's just what I do. You can do whatever you want. But anyways, we're gonna start uh, by following this torque sequence and we're gonna torque them to 40 foot pounds. All right, once you have them all torqued to 40, we can torque them all to 80 foot pounds following that same torque sequence. Okay, they're all torqued to 80. Now we got the big boy in here. Uh, we're gonna torque them to 130 foot pounds now. It calls for 125, you know, you can do 130, 135, whatever you want, but anyways, do the final torque. I like to make it click twice, uh, especially when I'm doing the final torque. I like to give it two clicks every time just to make sure it did torque out. One, two. All right, the head is torqued to spec. Now we're gonna hook up the exhaust manifold. So you're gonna put your new gaskets in here. Sometimes it's good to get a guy underneath lifting up on the turbo just to line it up a little bit better. Uh, and then also, I know in the last video I said I was gonna fab this bracket up a little bit that I cut for this back coolant line, but honestly, it's Saturday. I just want to get this done and it's my truck so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to leave it a little bit loose like that and if I have to, I'll make a bracket for it down the road. It's not a bad idea to use copper coat on the threads of the exhaust manifold bolts. I like to use them on anything that gets hot. And remember uh, your bolts here with the studs, they're in the front uh, two cylinders uh, to mount that heat shield. Okay, I got all my new gaskets in, the studs are in, I put copper coat on all the threads. Now we're gonna start in the middle and work our way out and torque them to 32 foot-pounds. So, you know, do cylinder three first and then do cylinder four and then come up to two, back and forth. Work your way out to 32 foot-pounds. All right, I'm just gonna put this little bolt down here. If you can see that in that fuel or that coolant line there, just gonna bolt that back up kind of on the side of the block there and then throw your heat shield back on your exhaust manifold. Okay, now I'm gonna fold this electrical back over here. This is for the grid heater. Uh, and then there's also some wires under the alternator or the bracket. So that one clips on, goes underneath. Uh, this one clips on over top. I think there's a couple nuts you put on there uh, just to hold these wire in place. And then we'll slide the alternator back over and put the bolt in here and tighten the bottom bolt for the alternator. Okay, now just put all the bolts in and kind of re-secure this wiring uh, to the front of the head here. There's uh, kind of brackets all along the front there. So just re-hook those up. 
Okay, this is all secured. So now get someone to help you uh, go underneath and get on this belt tensioner, loosen it back, pull it back a bit and get somebody to put the belt back on your alternator for you. Okay, belt's on. Now we can go to the driver's side here and start putting stuff onto the side of the head. So I don't quite remember everything yet. I know that there's this one uh, wire back here. If you can see it, that's gotta get bolted up there. And then we have to grab the fuel filter housing and we'll bolt it up here. And uh, I think that might be it, I'm not sure. We'll have to go along and just make sure we get everything connected here. Okay, I actually left this uh, fuel filter housing loose for the time being just because back here I'll pull it up there's that fuel line there uh, it makes it easier to put that fuel line on the back of the head uh, here's the banjo bolt for it and I always put new uh, seal washers on it's got a bigger one that goes over the back and then a smaller one for the front uh, so yeah you can attach attach the fuel line on the back of your head and then once that's attached then uh, finish tightening up this fuel filter housing Okay, fuel filter is bolted up. I actually had the wrong bolt in here. I forgot it needs to have needs to be one with the studs so you can mount your dipstick to it later on. Uh, another tip: always make sure your uh, the back fuel line there. I blew it out with some brake clean and then air before I hooked it back up to the head. Just any fuel line you hook up, you want to blow out with some brake clean uh, or some air. You know, just to clean it all out. Make sure you're not getting any contaminants into the fuel system. Okay, now we're gonna put our fuel rail on, but before that, we've kind of accumulated a little bit of dirt, dust, and shit like that on top of the engine. So I'm just gonna give it a little uh, blow job here before, clean it all up, and then we'll uh, put the fuel rail on. Before you put the fuel rail on, just get in uh, all the the nozzles and stuff like that and blow it all out with brake clean and uh, get all of them and then blow it all out with air after and just make sure especially that this part is real clean because this is going to feed your fuel injectors and you don't want any kind of contaminants getting inside your fuel injectors okay fuel rail is bolted down uh, now over here you got a connection uh, a banjo bolt fitting there uh, and this guy on top you kind of get it in place there and uh, again blow these out with uh, brake clean and air and try to use new uh, seals uh, seal washers when you're replacing all this stuff there's also one more guy here on the bottom of the fuel rail just with this one so uh, clean them all up and hook them all together okay now we're gonna get our fuel injectors ready and put them in okay so I'm first gonna I'm gonna get rid of the copper washers and the O-rings on all the injectors. So the copper washers, I just use a really fine flathead screwdriver and kind of get underneath them just like that. And I pry them up. Once you kind of have them up a bit like that, you can slide the copper washers off and discard them because we're gonna put new ones on. Then for the O-rings, I just use any kind of pick and uh, and just peel them off of there and that's it okay so you can get all the copper washers and o-rings off of each of your injector keep in mind put them all back and uh, keep them all in order as you're doing this you don't want to mix them up okay once you got your copper washers and your o-rings off um, I like to just take an SOS pad and on the the tip here I like to just kind of clean it up, get it shiny again. Just using an SOS pad so it's just cleaning it up. It's not actually taking any material off or anything like that. The injector tips are quite fragile, so you don't want to bump them or anything. And then, uh, yeah, once they look pretty good, then I'm just going to grab some brake clean and kind of spray them off just like that. And uh, yeah, then they're nice and clean. It's good to get some air. Blow them off and uh, there you go. Keep it clean. And uh, so clean all the injectors and then we'll start putting the O-rings and the new copper washers on. Okay, so now we can put on new copper washers. So here's the new copper washer. I'm just gonna kinda get it started just a little bit 
by hand. It's about all I can do. Um, and I like to put a socket and I just kind of push it down into the socket. Some of them are kind of tight, like this one seems kind of tight. So I'm just gonna hold it in my hand, grab a little hammer and gently tap it. There you go, you can, you can hear when it bottomed out there. So oh, a little bit on the corner didn't, but. Be very gentle when you're doing this. I mean, there's probably a proper way to do it, but this is just how I do it. Um, but yeah, once you have the copper washer all nice, uh, then move on to the next one. So grab my copper washer, put it on a bit. This, I'm using a 3-8 socket right now. Just whatever socket you use, make sure that it's got enough room to slide uh, over the injector nozzle. Yeah, these guys are tight. It's good though, at least they'll stay on nice. And there's another one. Once your copper washers are on, I use uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly. Uh, you can also use oil, uh, but I'm just gonna take a little bit. It's a little too much. Just kind of lather the O-ring up nice with the petroleum jelly. Then I'm gonna slide it on over, kind of roll it around and uh, up to the injector, or sorry, and then up to the, the groove where it sits. Then I'm gonna put a little bit more of uh, this Vaseline around it, just get it nice and lubed up, um, just so it slides in the hole nice. So there, this injector is 100% ready to go back into the engine. Just make sure it stays clean. If you get any dirt or anything on it, you gotta clean it off before it goes in the engine. So you can go ahead and put all the rest of your uh, injector O-rings on. So before we put the injectors in, we just want to look into the holes, uh, check out all of your holes, just make sure they're really nice and clean, they look like that, and then we'll go ahead and start putting the injectors in. So remember the injectors are going back in the same holes they came out of, so I laid mine just out as the way they sit in the truck, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll start with number one just because it's easier to show you guys. So it's nice and clean, it's lubed up, now it's very important that this hole here, that's your fuel feed tube. That's where it will go. So that goes to the driver's side. So there's a hole, goes like that. So I'm just gonna put the injector in the hole. Just double check the hole is clean. Yeah, injector's all good, we're ready. So drop it in there nice. And then I'm just gonna push down on the injector. Usually I kinda go like this with two hands, but for the video I'll just do it with one. And you should hear it pop into place. There we go. So that injector is in. We'll put all the injectors in like that and then we'll uh, put the bolts in after. Okay, I got my injector hold down bolts here. I'm just going to get them all started hand tight. And when you're tightening them, see how these things pivot? You wanna try to keep them as flat or horizontal as possible. So don't tighten this one down all the way and have it sticking up on the other side. So just put the bolts in and just kind of get them hand tight, nice and even. Okay, once you got uh, the injector hold down bolts just hand tight and this uh, bridge is nice and flat, you're gonna set your torque wrench to 44 inch pounds, not foot pounds, make sure you set it to inch pounds and it's the first torque we're gonna do. So when you torque them, kind of go a little bit on this side and then a little bit on this side back and forth just to keep it nice and straight and we'll torque them just to 44 inch pounds and then we'll torque them more oh there we go that one click there that one click there okay so torque them all to 44 inch pounds and then we'll put the fuel tubes in and once we're all done we'll torque them up some more all right now we'll put our fuel tubes in the side I have new O-rings, so I'm gonna switch them out, but typically these ones are usually pretty good, so you don't have to change those O-rings, but have a look at them. If they look good, you can use them. It's always best to change them out. Again, with these, we're gonna kinda, I'm probably gonna wire brush it here and spray it down with brake clean and air, clean it all up nice, put my new O-rings on, and then we'll, we'll put them into the head. Now, 
in a world of good, better, or best, it's always best to actually change these every time because the end here kind of has a crush fit and uh, you can distort it when you, when you take them out and put them back in. Uh, I'm putting them into the same injectors they came out of. You should too. So it shouldn't leak. Uh, I only change these fuel tubes if I notice one is damaged or if I'm putting new injectors in, then I change the fuel tubes. So anyways, uh, just clean these up, put new O-rings on if you're gonna do that, and uh, then we'll put them into the, the, the block, or sorry, into the head. Okay, put some more petroleum jelly or oil, whatever you wanna use on this O-ring. And uh, these dots, the detents kinda, they, they point up, I believe. I usually put it at an angle and then twist it. There, you can feel it when it, when it kind of went into the groove. And then you just put, push these in and you'll feel them pop in too, just like this. Just like that. So go ahead and put uh, all your fuel tubes in. Okay, all my fuel tubes are popped in. Now remember when we took the head apart, we actually took this uh, lifting hook off just so we could get at the back uh, cylinder six fuel line. So I'm gonna take this lifting hook off because it's gonna make it way easier to do this all up. And then uh, after I get that lifting hook off, We'll put the, your fuel tube nuts on. Okay, now you can take your, uh, in, your injector fuel tube nuts, these guys here, and clean them up. I'm gonna use a wire brush and clean up the threads. And uh, I also got this guy that, uh, in case I wanna try to clean out in this cone a little bit. So clean these guys all up and then we'll put them in. All right, once you have them all cleaned up, we can thread them all in hand tight. Okay, once you have all your injector tube, fuel tube nuts in, uh, you can torque them to 11 foot-pounds for now. My torque wrench doesn't go to 11 foot-pounds, so I'm just using a ratchet, and I'm just gonna give them just a little snug like that. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, torque these all to 11 foot-pounds. Okay, then we can do the final torque on our injector hold-down bolts. It's gonna be 89 inch-pounds, and again, just go a little bit on this side and then a little bit on that side. So torque your injector hold down bolts to 89 inch pounds. All right, we've done our final torque on the injectors. So now we can do the final torque on our fuel uh, tube nuts. So this one is gonna be 37 foot pounds. Just like that. So go ahead and torque all the, the nuts there. Okay, now we're gonna clean up the fuel injector fuel lines here. Uh, clean them up nice, use a wire brush, whatever, and then make sure you're putting, so I like to spray them out with brake clean, so brake clean shoots out the other side and blow them off with air at the end of it. And yeah, we'll uh, put all the injector fuel lines in. It's good to blast your fuel rail there with some air too before we hook on the fuel lines just to make sure there's no debris or anything in there. Okay, all the fuel lines are on. I never looked up the actual torque spec for them. I usually just kind of tighten them until they're snug and then just give it a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, before we put this intake elbow in, is I'm gonna change my fuel filter just because it's a lot easier to get at it. So I recommend you do the same. Uh, but I'm just gonna put a pail underneath and you see this yellow valve? If you, uh, if you turn that, it's gonna open a valve and it's gonna drain your fuel bowl there. And then, uh, yeah, just unscrew this lid. There'll be an O-ring to change in the filter. I'm not gonna go through it. You guys can change your own fuel filter, I'm sure, if you're doing this job. So, but yeah, I'm gonna change the fuel filter quick and then we'll get back at her. Nice new fuel filter. Oh, yeah, you can get this wiring kind of folded back over here. Uh, and we'll put the grid heater with the intake elbow on. We'll put that back on. I'm not exactly sure. I know these, went on the back of the intake elbow, so we'll have to kind of figure out how they run as we put it back together. Use a razor blade or a buffing wheel or something and just clean up uh, your grid heater and the intake elbow and everything. Get this old gasket material off and then we'll put new gaskets on it and put it together. All right, nice and shiny. So we'll go ahead, put a new gasket on the engine, These, this grid heater get sandwiched between the gaskets and then uh, and you put this on top so go ahead and put your intake elbow and grid heater on these are my intake elbow bolts they're disgusting so i'm just gonna run them through this wire wheel and shine them up a bit this one still looks pretty greasy 
If you have ones that look like this, it would definitely be best to change them if you can. Okay, and take elbows in. You gotta do up this uh, ground strap. And then the wiring back here, which one? I got my injector line went on, my injector wiring went on first. Second was these two sensors, which I plugged in. And third was my grid heater wiring and that all went on this stud back there. So you can hook that all up and we'll move on to the next thing. I just remembered about this lifting hook, so I just put it back on quick. You can do the same. It'd be best to just do it after you put it on your cylinder six fuel line. But uh, yeah, I just popped her on now. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our push rods in. We're gonna put our valve bridges and our rocker arm assemblies in. So we'll start with the push rods. Okay, so for your push rods, you should inspect them, look at them, roll them on a flat surface, make sure they're not bent, and then uh, spray them off with brake clean, wipe them down, clean them up nice. And then what I'm gonna do is I, uh, I like to dip uh, kind of halfway up I dip it in some oil, and then I once it's dipped in oil, then I put it into the truck. I'm using these Hamilton Heavy Duty or Extreme Duty, whatever they are, push rods, just so I got a little more meat there uh, once I put a bigger turbo and injectors in the truck. So here's my oil in here. I'm just gonna dip it in there and then put it in the truck. All right, got some oil on it. Put it in the hole, and you'll kind of feel it I kinda gotta work it around a little bit, up and down, just to find the spot. There we go. Once you find, you'll, you'll know when you put it in there, it kind of almost gets stuck in the hole a little bit, but you shouldn't, it should feel nice and you shouldn't be able to kinda move the bottom or anything. So just make sure, and, and they'll all be relative, uh, relatively the same height. I mean, they'll go up and down as uh, wherever they are sitting on the cam lobes. But uh, yeah, just make sure they're all in the right spot. And, Put all your push rods in. Remember the back ones, they gotta go up into the firewall, just in those holes you popped out, and then uh, you can put them in. Bronx, did you rip up a box? Okay, we're gonna put our, uh, put these valve bridges, whatever you wanna call them on. See how they have this little indent on the side? I, I don't know which way they actually go. Like, see, I took mine off the way that they came and some of mine were here, some of mine were on that side, so whatever. I'm gonna put them all facing the exhaust manifold. But uh, anyways, I'll grab one for cylinder one here. And you're just gonna put them on just like that. They just sit right on top of the valves. So put them all back on the valves you took them off of. And like I said, I'm putting these to the left side, uh, like the exhaust manifold side. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know which way they're actually supposed to go or if it matters because like i said most of the trucks i take apart they're just randomly somewhere on the right and somewhere on the left so okay now we're going to put the rocker assemblies in i gave them a shot of brake clean and blew them off just to kind of clean them out a little bit okay so i like to put them all in as an assembly make sure there's nothing gross on the bottom or nothing like that kind of hold it all together and i'm going to use two hands and drop it down on top of the valve bridges. Make sure they go in my push rods there, just like that. And then I'm gonna start start my bolts and we'll tighten them up later. So then just double check that nothing moved off. You know, your bridges are good, push rods are in place and you can put them all in. Before you put these in too, it's a good idea just to kind of feel uh, these where they rest on the valve bridges, just to make sure that no parts are falling off and you know they're still rolling smoothly. Okay, the rockers are in. So in the removal video, we uh, backed off these valve adjusting screws just to loosen it up a bit because when we tighten these down, you know, if there's something stuck in there or, you know, the head was decked a bit, so it's gonna be a tiny bit smaller, just stuff like that. We don't want to bend a push rod or anything when we torque them down. So if you haven't already, make sure you back off these, uh, like you loosen the nuts here and then you stick an Allen key in there and you actually back it off half a turn or a full turn or whatever. But now we're going to uh, tighten all the rocker arms down uh, the torque spec for them is 27 foot-pounds. So you can go ahead and torque all these bolts to 27 foot-pounds. Uh, 
I like to just check them twice too. All right, once these uh, rockers are torqued down, we can do the valve adjustment, which is just my least favorite part because it's tedious and it's uncomfortable laying on my stomach on here to get the back cylinders, but we must do it. So let's uh, get our, our feeler gauges. The specs are gonna be uh, 10 thou on the intake and on the exhaust side, it's 20 thou. So I use these feeler gauges, they're pretty cool because they're stepper gauges. So uh, basically the front part on this one is 20 thou and the middle or the back half on this one is 22 thou. So I should be able to slide it in, but I won't be able to slide it past this, uh, this halfway point here where it uh, gets a little bit thicker. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get it on top dead center cylinder one. So we should get it so both of these uh, rockers are loose. Now to do that, I have a 15 millimeter socket on a, a half inch drive on a big kind of pry bar wrench here or ratchet. So you're going to put it on your harmonic balancer, one of the nuts and bar it over. And you see right here, there's a line on your harmonic balancer. It says TDC it stands for top dead center. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark it with a white uh, marker because this needs to be directly straight up at 12 o'clock position. And if we mark it, it's just a lot easier to see from above. Okay, there we go. It's marked. I should be able to see that line easy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this engine uh, and put this mark exactly 12 o'clock uh, point straight up. It's going to be a bit hard because you're fighting with compression against the engine, but you'll be able to get her. Also, when you're rotating the engine, rotate it clockwise because that's the way the engine turns and you want to rotate it uh, the same way the engine turns. We should be pretty close there. Let's go check. Okay, it's kind of hard for you to see, but uh, my white mark I made on my harmonic balancer is straight up and down in the 12 o'clock position. And I know I'm on top dead center cylinder one because both my rockers on cylinder one are loose. If these aren't loose, then that means you're on top dead center cylinder six. So if that's the case, get back underneath and rotate the engine a full turn, so 360 degrees, and put that mark back up at 12 o'clock, and then you should be on top dead center one. Okay, so now we can adjust the valve lash on the intake one, two, and four, and we can do the exhaust on cylinders one, three, and five. See how those ones are all loose. So we can set the we can set the valve lash on those ones. And remember, for the intake, which is the smaller rocker arm, that's your intake. We're gonna set that one to ten thou, and then uh, the exhaust one, which is your bigger rocker there, uh, that one we're setting to twenty thou. So we're, I'm going to start by showing you how to adjust. Uh, we'll do uh, intake on cylinder one. So here's my 10 thou feeler gauge. See, it's so loose, so I need to tighten it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a five millimeter Allen key. I'm going to keep this uh, feeler gauge in it. I'm just going to kind of snug it up just a little bit. You want to feel some drag on the feeler gauge. Uh, but you don't want it to be too tight that you can't move it in there. So when you think you've got it pretty good, like I feel like that's pretty good, then you're gonna spin this lock nut down, and then you're gonna grab 14 millimeter wrench, and you wanna try to hold this up here so you don't tighten the adjuster when you tighten this, but you're just gonna snug that up just like that. Then you're gonna go back and you're gonna check your valve lash. So see this one? Remember these are the stepper gauges. So it's 10 thou on this side and it's 12 thou on this side. So it should slide pretty nice in here and then it shouldn't really slide on that side. So if I put it in, it slides in there. It's a little bit of friction, but then see, I can't push it past the half mark. So I'd say this one is good. Same procedure for your exhaust, except for you're using a different feeler gauge. You're using a 20,000 feeler gauge, but you're gonna do the same thing where 
you're gonna put it under there. This one's super loose, I backed it off so much. So you just wanna have a, a slight drag in there, but you don't want it to go over uh, and be too loose or anything like that. So as long as you set all your valves relatively to the same resistance when you're putting your feeler gauge in, you should be fine. Once you're happy with uh, your valve lash adjustment, uh, this nut is supposed to be torqued to 18 foot-pounds, I believe. I usually just give it a good snug with a wrench. Uh, after you tighten this again for your final torque there, always just double check your valve lash, make sure it didn't change on you. And as long as it's good, like this one, I checked it, it was good. I'm just gonna mark it like that with a paint marker, just so I know this one is done and it's easier to keep track of. Okay, so I got the six valves that we can adjust uh, at TDC1, they're all adjusted. So now what we're gonna do is go back down under and uh, get on that harmonic bouncer and rotate the engine 360 degrees, a full rotation, keep that, uh, put that uh, top dead center mark right up at 12 o'clock again, and then we can adjust the rest of the valves. Okay, I barred the engine over, see how cylinder one, they're tight. Uh, so now we can do intakes on three, five, and six. And then we can do the exhaust on two, four, and six. So basically the valves you didn't adjust the first time, you can adjust those now. Okay, all my valves are adjusted. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back underneath and I'm gonna bar the engine over let's say nine times, cause then it'll bring us back to TDC one. I'm gonna check the valves, adjust if necessary, and then I'll bar it over once more time to TDC six and check the valves again. And uh, cause you, once you start rotating the engine, some stuff might loosen up. So yeah, crank the engine over a few times and check them again. Okay, I cranked her over about nine times. We're on TDC one again, so I'm gonna double check my valve lash on intakes one, two, and four, and exhaust uh, one, three, and five. See, this is just my first one. Look how much it loosened up on me. So that just goes to show how important it is to crank the engine over a few times and double check it. So I'm gonna have to readjust this one and who knows how many else I'll have to readjust too. Okay, and when I check them and set them up again, or if they're good, whatever, I mark them on the other side just so I know they've been checked twice. I had to tighten up three out of the six, so that's not too bad. Now I'm gonna crank it over 360 degrees, get our on TDC six, and check the remaining six valves, and then we will be done this valve set procedure. Thank God. Okay, and again, I just rotated it. I'm on TDC cylinder six now, so I'm gonna check my intake. Uh, oops, intake, the small one. Three five and six and i'll check my exhaust two four and six okay i've checked all my valves two times now i did just about half of them on tdc6 as well uh, but yeah they're all double marked they're good to go so now we're going to put on the rocker housing but before we do that we have to do a little tiny bit of machining here just to fit over the arp head stud so here's my rocker housing. Um, if you look at the instructions there, it's where bolt 24 is, which is at the back. So this is at the back of the engine, if it was sitting on the engine. And basically right here, we just need to kind of grind a little bit of that out. If you can see this picture, I'll hold it up beside it. So there's the little groove there. So see here how they have it machined out, just like that. So we have to do that right here. I'm just gonna use a die grinder with an aluminum bit and just round that, this corner basically, I'm gonna round it out. And just like that. Just gonna put a new gasket in my rocker housing. Make sure uh, your cylinder head is nice and clean where uh, this uh, seal is gonna sit on the bottom of here. And then we can put this rocker housing on.
get all your bolts, put them in, and then uh, I just, I don't know the torque spec, I just snug them up. They don't have to be super tight, uh, but just kind of give them a little snug. I start from the middle and work your way out, so you can go ahead and do that now. Now you can go ahead and put your injector wiring back on. Now these nuts, you do not want to tighten them very much. Like you just barely give them the tiniest little bit of a snug with a little quarter inch ratchet or something. You could probably even just use a nut driver and just tighten them by hand. You know, you do not need to tighten these very much. You'll break them. And if you break them, then you need a new injector. So don't break them. All right, cool. So now you can just give this a little wipe with a rag, uh, make sure it's nice and clean. I like to put a new gasket on the valve cover. If you got one, you should do it. And yeah, we'll put the valve cover on. Now just before I put the valve cover on, I like to get some oil and just kind of oil up the rockers and the springs as little bit as best you can. So uh, the back cylinders are kind of hard to get. I have a, an oil gun that I use to squirt back there, but just try to put a, kind of lubricate the moving parts a little bit and then we'll put the valve cover on just so it's kind of pre-lubed uh, for the little bit of time it's gonna be cranking until it gets oil pressure. Okay, my nice spray painted black valve cover is on. Uh, I know I said in the removal video it's good to change this filter, but I actually looked at it and I realized this isn't a filter, that was just me being silly. The 6.7 Cummins have a filter that's good to change, but in this 5.9 Cummins, I think all this does is just kind of, uh, it captures the vapors in your crankcase and it collects your oil in here and it just drips back into your, your uh, valve train. So I wouldn't worry about changing this. Anyways, grab your bolts and start the middle like always and uh, put the six bolts in here and tighten your valve cover down. All right, now you can plug in your injector plugs. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, your, this uh, crankcase breather. There's two hoses for that. My other one's down here. Uh, so they go right there. Uh, Rebolt your dipstick up. Uh, whatever else you got kind of over here, we can just do it all together before we put on the little engine cover there. Okay, once you think you got everything hooked up, you can put your engine cover back on. Remember to put this wire under that bolt. Bronx is crazy, he's had enough. He's ready to go home. Now I'm gonna put my new thermostat in. And then I'm gonna fold over the upper rad hose. Actually, I'm gonna clean the bottom of this off a little bit. Yeah, but then you're gonna put that down and bolt your rad hose down. Once your rad hose is bolted down, we can put this uh, heater core line on, pop it on and do up the clamp. All right, now I'm doing an oil change. You should too if you're doing this job. Uh, I'm gonna leave this air intake pipe out just for now so I can get this oil filter a little easier. I got the oil draining right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an oil change and then we'll uh, get back to where we're almost done here. Now I'll put some coolant in it. I'm using new coolant, but if you kept your old coolant clean and it looked fine, you can just put your old stuff back in there. Okay, my coolant's all topped up. I got a new rad cap to put on. So I'll just put that guy on. Just like that. And uh, make sure you're topping this up too. There's a line down there that says max. So just fill this uh, reservoir to the maximum. Now I'm gonna put this uh, air intake back in. Now you guys can hook up the negative battery posts that you took off in the last video. Uh, I took my batteries out because I'm putting new batteries in here and mine are pretty tired. So I'm gonna put my new batteries in now and hook them up. Okay, well I think that's it. I think we're all hooked up. Make sure you got your coolant and your oil levels good. I always spin the fan just by hand a few times to make sure it's not gonna hit on anything. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is pick whichever fuel line Injector line is easiest, like this one looks pretty easy. So I'm gonna loosen it. And what we're gonna do is when we're cranking the, the truck, uh, we're gonna bleed the air out and you're gonna see some uh, diesel. Once diesel starts coming out of here, that should be lots there. Once diesel starts coming out of that one you loosened off, then you know uh, you can tighten it up and it should fire up. 
Okay, so since we changed the fuel filter, I'm just gonna turn the ignition on, wait 30 seconds, shut it off, turn it on, wait 30 seconds, shut it off. I'm gonna just do that a few times and that should hopefully prime our fuel filter. Okay, now I'm gonna crank the engine. It's best if you have somebody that can stand here and watch that fuel injector line to tell you when uh, fuel comes out, but I'm by myself. So I'm just gonna crank it for like 10 seconds and then I'm gonna come have a look and see if there's any fuel there. Okay, let's see if we got any fuel. Yeah, look, that one back there, that guy down in there, it's wet. So I'm gonna tighten it up and then I'll crank the engine and it should fire. Check it all for leaks. She sounds like she's running good. See if there's any smoke coming out of the exhaust. No, nope, looks good back there. I don't see any leaks yet. So uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Well, there's no leaks. All my fluid levels are good. So I think she's ready for a road test. Uh, anyways, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It took me a lot of time and effort to make this video for you guys. I really hope it helped. If you got questions, ask in the comments or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel and shoot me a message. Thanks guys, see you on the next video.